Hey, so we're, we're, we're recording. Official. Okay, thank, thank you, everybody. Um, so our, um, our public hearing this evening, this is on the, uh, the Black Grant Committee, um, Thursday, September 9th, 6 p.m., consideration of fiscal year 2022 uh, projected requests in our one-year action plan uh, and anticipated available funding of a, roughly about 1.5 million. So in the, in the public hearing notice, I don't know if it's for you, but I'll just read it aloud here, but we have um, overall um, about uh, $1,572,775 of available funding. And then we'll get into a little bit within our presentation of um, uh, the benefits to low and moderate income persons and then uh, the aid to eliminate slum and blight. Um, and then requests were all due as of August 13th, 2021. Um, however, that doesn't preclude someone from, you know, coming in this evening or, or you know, and, and changing things or, or requesting uh, funding. So that could still happen this evening. So with that, I'll we'll jump into the presentation and uh, we'll go through this pathway here this evening. Just minimize the... One thing I just want to note, if there's any, um, any questions along the way, don't... Um, don't be afraid just to sort of jump in. I think if this is more interactive meeting, it's just gonna be better. But I just hear you talk. So yeah. Uh, so we've got over 24 applications that were received for 22, uh, 2022 funding. And then uh, this is gonna get into the recommended requ uh, requested uh, amount of funding and then what we're, what we're recommending for each one. One thing to note is that, um, so we were, uh, there's a projected entitlement of a little, almost 1.3 million. That's that number up here. And then with the uh, economic development loans and uh, repayments from rehabilitation um, income payments, um, it was roughly you know, another $275,000 added to this. So in total about $1.5 million. Um, and of that 20% is what we can use toward um, funding the uh, public um, administration. Um, and then some other things that you're going to hear during this are, you know, low to moderate income and, uh, you know, 51% or greater of low to moderate income. What, what that means is basically in terms of county median income, HUD, HUD each year establishes a county's poverty limit guidelines. And um, for just for example, I mean, if you have a one person uh, family or household, um, that, that one person to be at 51% or greater is, is, is right here at the, like roughly about the, the 40, $47,250 threshold. Um, and then it just, you know, it changes as more persons within the, within the family. Some of the maps that we're going to be talking about, there's two maps. This is the first of the two is the, for the block grant, uh, block groups. Um, and then these block groups, um, basically have 51% uh, or greater low to moderate income. This is based on, uh, you know, 2010 census tracts. Uh, the census tracts are the red lines that you see here. And then the block groups are smaller geographic areas within those census tracts. So for instance, here within uh, census tract 1016, block group five is a smaller geographic area. So the, the larger uh, 1016 census tract is here and then of each of these block groups within within that, and then the yellow areas here are that are where the low to moderate income uh, populations uh, exist. And then the other map is the census. You know, again, the census tracts are the red lines. Uh, it also shows block groups, but again, this is the uh, American Community Survey actually 2015 data showing um, the larger service area within our city. It, it does cover a pretty good part of, of the city, as you can see. So those area benefits that you'll see within our um, um, uh, plan here, the program requests, this is the, the larger area uh, of eligibility. So just starting out with our um, pro, uh, public administration. Um, of, so of that $1,572,725, um, in the in the in the budget or in the listed in the staff report, we have a twenty percent cap of what we can use for um, administration of, of the program, and that amounts to roughly about three hundred fourteen thousand five hundred fifty five dollars. 
last year's budget for comparison was 288,000. That, that just basically means that we had a lower amount, a little bit lower amount of um, available funds uh, or, and or, you know, the uh, programmatic income from uh, economic development loans or housing rehab. So um, this year we're a little higher. So Steve, the yeah. administration is payroll for staff essentially. Yeah, pro programmatic type of stuff, just making sure projects are getting done, the money is getting, you know, out the door to the to the yeah. project to the uh, and is it is, is much of that contracted out or is it mostly mostly in house staff in -house. staff? I mean, it, it, I suppose it could be, but but it's mostly in house. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and then also public service requests. That's another category we're going to get into. Public service requests. Um, you know, again, of that total um, allocation here, we're capped at 15%. So, um, you know, public services such as community service officers or, you know, those types of things, uh, the street beautification, we were capped at a total using up to 15%. So that's a $235,000. So just, just to throw those, those uh, things out there, these are federal requirements that we have to follow. So if we start moving in then to um, the actual programs within under under public, um, I'm sorry, not under public administration, but under um, under public service requests, we have the first one we have here is the uh, community service officer. Um, you know, and this, these were you know mentioned. All all these things were basically explained at the at the last uh, meeting we had back in August. So I guess I'm not going to get too much into the weeds on that. I'm happy to explain anything if you have any questions on it. But um, what they what they had requested was um, forty thousand dollars, and what we're recommending um, to uh, to fund is is what they what they've asked for. Um, I just want to also point out I mean, in the in the staff report and the budget that was uh, you know sent out, there are there's basically a number of columns up here on the top. Uh, there's four four columns. They've got what was requested over here. Um, and then other supporting funds, other supporting funds are like other, other non, maybe non-federal grants, for instance, that the organization has applied for outside of, outside of this. Um, and then uh, what we're, you know, recommending in this, in this column, and then just usually typically a difference between the, the requested and the recommended will we'll follow over here. And just so no one's confused, that 40K is about a third of what police officer costs is for payroll and benefits and all that. Or maybe, a, maybe two and a half of the third. So we're not paying right. an officer salary. Right. 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 No, no reason. right. Yeah, these are these are really just sort of supplementing what you know the police officers are, are, are doing. This is really just adding adding a, uh, a you know specific, you know, uh, little shot or boost for you know funding for specific uh, Working within the community, within neighborhood groups, um, different neighborhoods throughout the city. Again, this is sort of, um, you know, uh, take a look at, you know, parks. I mean, within this area, Census Tract One on the east side of the city, um, it's one of the on the east northeast side of the city. Uh, within specific block groups, um, you know, that's where this, these community service officers are really focusing on, you know, um, working within those neighborhoods. <coughs> Yeah, yeah, and so yeah, Rod, Rod, yeah. Is, he's he's one of them, and you know, there's there's others, but I mean, they, but yeah. yeah. So also, um, I guess moving on along with the, the in terms of public services, um, we have graffiti removal, abatement, uh, and I guess they're requesting fifty, a little over fifty two hundred dollars, and again, we're recommending um, that be uh, funded. Is that discrepancy just a typo? Two seventeen versus two seventeen. Yep. Let's take a look. Which one's the actual sure. number? Let's take a look. Yeah, because on the thing that was sent, uh, it's right. Catch. Yeah, it's two seventy. Okay, yeah, fifty two seventy one. Okay, got it. Not that sixty bucks is going to make a break. <laughs> right? Nope. Two <laughs> catch. It's thrown off. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your eyes. <clears throat> Must be a good artist to do that, no? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen some good ones. <laughs> Um, frail elderly, public service, again, helping older adults, um, you know, run errands, move around, you know, within the community, uh, take care of necessary things, um, you know, also um, home chores and so on. But um, so 
you know, again, we're recommending what they had requested at the 29,500 level. This is with um, ARIS Senior Network. Our gang prevention. Here. In the, within gang prevention, again, just you know, removing a lot of the um, dangerous uh, items that had unfortunately fallen into the wrong hands, and you know, um, drug activity. You can see some of the examples of what they're what they're cleaning up under gang prevention on the right, uh, funding at the recommended level. Liberty Heights program. Liberty Heights. Um, application submitted by the uh, West Dallas Rec Department, Shelly Strasser on the line. And, um, you know, with COVID uh, in 2020, the um, Liberty Heights um, pool was, you know, closed down, 21 it, it reopened. Uh, so the funding here, the $10,000 being requested, the support of, of the staff, you know, the lifeguard staff to, to make sure, you know, kids are safe on the site. So it's our recommended level of funding. Shell, anything else to add? Um, no, I don't think so. Okay. Thank you, though. Healthy homes. So this is a um, this was funded previously. I mean, um, at somewhat we're, we're also you know so they're basically installing fire um, smoke alarms and safety measures within within buildings um, for low to moderate income uh, beneficiaries. Um, there, the health department is interested in um, taking a look at this program and actually having like a community service officer. And it would be probably like a citizen at large, perhaps, or maybe a, a staff person that, that would also advocate for you know healthy initiatives, whether it's uh, vaccines or you know other other measures, flu shots. You know, just perhaps a, a citizen at large, just to sort of help fund the educational component of, of getting the word out there and spreading the news throughout the neighborhood. So. Um, They've requested um, uh, twenty thousand. Um, our recommended level of funding here is a little bit less at fifteen thousand um, seven hundred. Um, but we're working on um, uh, possibly a, a, a healthcare uh, caseworker that would, you know, use use these funds to you know get out to the community and help out. So. Um, it's, within these funds here, within the fifteen seven. Yeah, within the fifteen seven. So it's it was funded previously um, in twenty one, um, but it's so this fifteen thousand seven hundred actually funded higher than it was in twenty one. Um, in fact, I have to look at the budget to see where it was at twenty one, but. Um, Ten thousand six ninety in, in twenty one. Mm -hmm. um, so we're we're funding a little bit higher. I mean, there's a little bit more that I think the health department wants to do um, than they have in the past. I mean, certainly they're going to work to you know reduce the lead, you know, um, poisoning risks and smoke alarms. But they also want to they want to do a little bit more of an educational component as well. well Steve, the picture showed smoke alarms, and you talked about smoke alarms. Which yeah, fire department smoke. Alarms. Um, I mean, the, they, the smoke alarm is not in the text have, here. Yeah, they have in the oh, past. It, it I mean, says fire, it does say fire, fire and carbon. Yeah, so I mean, you know, it's, it could be that the fire department does perhaps do that, but I mean, they haven't certainly in the past. Right. Um, this year, we don't have a, a funding request from the from the fire department. Mm -hmm. So um, I think the health department is, is absorbing some of that here. Well, that was one of our initiatives you know, for the city was duplication of. Yeah, services from across right. multiple departments trying to get rid of that. We just yeah. does it. And if they're going to be in a home doing the, uh, the, the smoke alarms, they can also do their other education, right. not just put a smoke alarm in. Well, they do, because, yeah. And, or I mean, check on like hoarding situations. I mean, you, mm -hmm. you, when you, because I've gone out a couple times, you see a lot of things that people say. So maybe that I I guess that probably is better for the health department because mm -hmm. they have a better 
well, substance abuse, chronic health, you might see something that's not building any way there. Yeah. Um, Family Resource Center is the next um, item. Yeah. So this this program just again helping um, young young folks, you know, kids, uh, with families, assisting with uh, their their development. Um, you know, and they're serving you know roughly about 150 people. Their, their requested fund is 20,000. We're recommending to fund them at that level. Do you know where? I don't know much about them. Do you know where they get? Any other funds? Any other grants? Um, I can find out. We, we have, don't have, to, have their application. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, we have anyone on on the line from uh, the Family Resource Center, Joni, or or okay, certainly get back to Holly. Yeah, just... um, the Wish Program. Women initiate self healing and hope. Um, they're, they're requesting 10,270, and we're recommending that they be funded at that level. Um, let's see, uh, the one thing about this is that, you know, with, within uh, West Dallas, I mean, we do have this is actually administered through a police department, our women's club, um, and health department, but there is a higher rate of uh, domestic abuse within the city, unfortunately. So, I mean, this is a Program which uh, provides you know, resources to empower and, and you know, resource for, for women to heal. Wisconsin Regional Training Partnership um, is uh, requesting $24,038 and uh, that is a recommendation for funding as well. Sort of a job, job resource training, uh, workforce development uh, resource within our, within our community. When they say majority of the grant is to fund outreach programs in West Dallas, which doesn't exist, is that to connect with other high schools, um, you know, areas around to promote this program? Promote the program, right. But I mean, specifically within West Dallas, I mean, they're, they're also looking at, you know, I guess 35 beneficiaries within West Dallas. Um, I know our family, our Lutheran Social Services, our uh, FSS program, Family Self-Sufficiency program is also, you know, they're, well, they're, they're working with them, again, to sort of help people, you know, level up and, um, you know, get people in some cases off of the you know, housing voucher program into a job or perhaps a better job. Um, and, and then with that, perhaps off of assistance and cost. Milwaukee County Homeless Outreach, um, $30,000 requested and that's the recommended level of funding. Substance abuse, this is a new program um, within, so we have four new programs. It's one of four new programs that we've, um, we've added. Um, substance abuse is a you know, major issue within the country. I mean, West Ellis, I mean, no different. So you know, we're, we are, um, they've, they've requested $15,000 and um, through our you know, family resource center, but um, we're, we're recommending to fund it $8,000. And again, it's, it's not that they don't deserve, you know, fifteen thousand dollars, but it's just like just the balance of, of of the budget here. We can, you know, that we're we're capped at a certain rate. We have to spread it out among amongst our applicants, and um, there's other new programs that um, are also being introduced here that we have to, to consider. So um, that's the reason for the the difference between what's been requested here and, and the recommended level of funding. Um. The homeless outreach, how much of that percentage is also affected with the drug use? Of so with um, homeless outreach, um, well, I mean, the, that's a different, I mean, so the um, homeless outreach program is done through, I guess, Milwaukee County Homeless Outreach. They actually have caseworkers out there that are 
you know, um, actually locating people that are homeless and then getting them into the homeless management information system, which is important because it's hard to, you know, the defining homelessness is, um, you know, is it, does it mean you kind of couch surf uh, from you know, family member to family member, or is it actually living under a bridge? So it's, it's really important for, you know, people that are claiming homeless to get out there and get into the system, touch base with a caseworker, get into that system, and then you're basically documented. And that's a step towards us being able to better help them if they're in that HMIS system to, uh, to then receive perhaps in their housing culture. Don't they have to have multiple reports in the system in order to be three? three yeah. yeah. And, and once they're in the Milwaukee County uh, <clears throat> housing, you know, division, and the whole housing first concept is to first get people a place to live. And if they have a substance abuse problem, they're definitely going to hook them up with it. And some of their programs require, you know, connections yeah. with that. But the housing first means first you need a place to live to have any stability in your life whatsoever. Then we address the rest. So it would be like a separate pot from this standpoint. But in the mass of millions in Milwaukee County housing, they would have connections with behavioral health to address that other Good stuff. Point. Um, the other, another new program, two of two of four new programs here is the Vermin Abatement Services. So you know the rat patrol, so to speak. But in this, um, you know, they're recommending. I guess it's through the health department again. This is this is something that um, they requested twenty five thousand dollars. You know, not that it's not important again, but I mean it's it's important to have a good clean image. Um, and in the past, in twenty fourteen. Um, Federal funds were used to support roughly about twenty-four thousand dollars of funding. What they did, what the health department did, is bait you know the sewers in, in areas uh, you know based on complaint based and uh, whatever hot spots. Well, we did a sixty-first uh, Mitchell Burnham. You know, yeah, sixty-eight. It yeah. was over twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, so the, the funds here, the recommended level of funding was we're proposing is sixteen thousand dollars, and that would. You know, not to say that baiting wouldn't be used, baiting would be part of this, but I think the health department also wants to take it a step further and sort of get some educational information out there. There's things that people can, you know, they can certainly call their elder persons and complain, hey, we've got rats, uh, or they call the city. Yeah, but, but I mean, there's also um, some things that you can do as a citizen, you know, to prevent the, the spread, you know, of, of, of the vermin. So throughout the city, keeping a, keeping a clean yard, picking up dog feces. Uh, you know, cutting your weed, you know, grass and you know, bird living feeders. on a weed. Get rid of the bird feeders. Right. Get rid of the birds. There's no that's bird feeders. Right. All right. Right. Yeah, so, I mean, that's that's going to be a big push, I think, with the health department to sort of take on that educational form as well. Because hopefully, you know, the baiting is good, but I mean, if we can help people help themselves, that's even better. So. And just to confirm, because it clearly says east side, I mean, I get numerous calls in District yeah. 3. I just got one today. Did you? Yeah. Um, you know about the rats and their neighbor doesn't properly put away the garbage it's a rental we can't do anything it's in the backyard bins can only sight on what they can see from the street so i mean the education is going to be citywide and not focus on the east side no, I, I think we do no. really need yeah. more of a citywide rat abatement program because they're, everywhere they're going the across yeah the east side of the city well, what, what, what the health department does is when there's a problem in the neighbors they will come and hang door tags and that's what else yeah, right. in the neighborhood around where the problem because you do this long enough yeah i can walk down an alley and show you where the rats are just because <laughs> they're greasy dirty okay mm, so when yeah. a rat goes in and out of a spot like under someone's garage door garage. there's a little schmutz on it okay mm -hmm. you know and yeah that's where the rats are going totally. you can tell just it gets to the point you get to mm -hmm. pick it up like that mm -hmm. so they'll i don't know how much doorbell ring they do they do a lot of door tags you know and 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 people are funny. Well, it's, you know, there's rats in my backyard. Well, those are your rats. Mm -hmm. you want <laughs> yeah, they want they they want us to hire Will Kill or Orkin or somebody for a hundred dollars. Well, you know, we're not spending. The city has no money. We're spending your money. I mean, it's, it's, it's still it costs money to sit down yeah. for them to follow up those concerns. That are, yeah, because it's not cheap way out. No. It would cost the city money. You know, I mean. Uh, you know, and, and the fact things that we have, we have a people physically tossing red crumbs out of the backyard. 
Well, of course, I mean, you know, you can encourage those little things come to your backyard, you know, <laughs> those worms, you know, those rats, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call them, you know, and that's one of the biggest problems. And that's why we switch to the garbage cans, you know, the consistent garbage cans. Well, I think that's mm -hmm. quite a bit. But yeah, renters, renters are good. Yeah. We have a lot of cats. More cats. More cats. Well, no, the cats have Owls. to be... Yeah. Cats have to be acclimatized. Yeah. She loves her cats. Yeah. Regular old house cat won't take on her. Uh -huh. No, we, we have, have feral cats. cats. We, we have to have to sell yeah, you have cats. street cats. I have a Chicago cat. Sounds like a bear. the name of a man. I don't think you are. I heard that if you have feral cats, you can call and they neuter them and then they let them back out. I've heard there's that there's big cities that have it in certain neighborhoods where they actually that's one of the ways they deal with it. Chicago. Yeah. That's what I thought Chicago was. Even yeah. Disney World does that. They let cats out at night to get rid of their vermin. Well, yeah, you don't. Some of scare the kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, well, mice are. <laughs> Mice aren't the problem. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. I just love the thought of it. There's, there's a lady yeah, who's locking out and has got feral cats. <laughs> there's, a, there's a group of people in New York City that train their dogs to go yep. get rats. And it's through videotape and they go out. Yeah. yeah. Cool. It's really awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something I need to well, we're going to do yeah, a lot of education. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Our next uh, a neighborhood cleanup. This is a, a new activity as well. Um, and this is again just sort of a small amount, five thousand uh, dollars. It's uh, requested and five thousand recommended. So who applied for this? I'm, I'm curious. So we uh, so Patrick Patrick uh, and I put this put this in. I mean, what, what we want to do in the city and you know, Mariel is maybe a big part of this is uh, you know within our um, community development, just getting out there and with, working with existing neighborhood organizations and then trying to create new ones and then maybe just a little seed money to help them you know buy some equipment or you know things that would help them. Clean up, or, or maybe they have some other things they want to do towards that end. Um, yeah, sort of building community, building neighborhoods, getting people out, working together, citizens, kind of a grassroots type of effort. Sort of. um, so now we move into. Um, well, this is this is the fifteen percent of the total. Right. right. Well, we, what yeah. we've been talking about so far is fifteen percent. Yeah, so I guess we, we can't kind of come to a, a point now. This is a, the part where, so the total per public service uh, funding request was like um, $253,158. And in the recommended, what we're recommending is uh, $232,028. So now we, from there, we move into housing rehab management. There's a slide towards the end where we have all the, the different categories, um, you know, uh, public facilities, services, housing rehab. Economic development list at the end. But so now we move on to the housing rehabilitation side of things. And so this is the, the first one we have here is housing management, uh, rehab management, loan management. Basically, it's kind of what, what, you, what it sounds like the portfolio management um, and delivery, um, title, title loans, you know, the administration within the uh, management of, of these loans to get them um, out the door and people that need them um, throughout the construction process, the bidding process, and so on. So we're, we're recommending to fund at the again at, this is a little bit different here. Let me just take a look. You know, yeah, four hundred fifty-five bucks. Okay, so we're what it says here is re, what's been requested is twenty-eight seven fifty, and we're recommending uh, twenty-eight ninety-five. So actually, a little bit, a little bit more. Twenty-two ninety-five. I'm sorry. Four fifty-five. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. A little bit less. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and then the uh, next program, housing, single family housing, um, rehabilitation, recommending to fund at the uh, request of a little over hundred thousand um, dollars. You know, this is um, working on single family homes um, for um, in, the, in the past, assisting eight. Uh, actually, the, the goal is to assist eight single family households. To. Yeah, you got to see the transformation. Stable neighborhoods is, is key. Two family housing, uh, recommended to fund at the $50,000 requested and then the recommended level here. I think this was asked last time. That's 
owner occupied duplexes. Yes, that's what we said last time. We said first make an order to do it just so I don't forget. And is that owner occupied over the life of the loan? What's the term on these <clears throat> terms? So they have to live there for five years now. The term is something that you get back in. Well, I'm just curious because if we know if we loan somebody the money based on the fact that's owner occupied, yeah, and just like, in all hey, I cash the check, you know, house is fixed yeah. up, and then I move out. You know, I think if you move, that you have to pay yeah. off the loan at that point or something like yeah, that. Yeah, so I much think much I saw that you have to be in the house for five years. Right. I think I saw something on the website, but I could be wrong. No, I think you're right. Thanks, Mario. Economic development, um, delivery of um, loans to uh, businesses, um, <clears throat> basically creating jobs um, for, for businesses um, and, and providing, at least in this case, the 22 five loans, create 20 jobs. Um, it's been a successful program. There's been a number of projects throughout the city, um, throughout the city where this is. Um, this has really helped uh, improve the improve the buildings, get people over um, over the hurdle, so to speak. There's typically all, often a gap to uh, or a cost to cure to bring the building to market, and this really helps um, you know bridge that gap, financial gap for the business faster. Two hundred twelve thousand dollars is the recommended funding. Yeah, Patrick, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So Patrick, uh, where is he? He's he's with uh, he's at his son's football game, oh, okay. so they have to support their own team. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know. Not, not, not <laughs> <laughs> and then this one is our economic development through Wibic, which is a um, a community development financial institution, and they provide financial counseling and small business loans to new and existing businesses. And last year, we know that they did over 110 PPP loans, and they gave out over 400 different grants statewide, but they also assisted several businesses in West Dallas. And so we recommend funding them at the $65,000 application. We actually have Talia on the line from Wibic. if there's anything Hi. you'd like to say. Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> Talia. Yeah, we're, um, you know, we've been in West Dallas, uh, you know, having a huge presence there. We have um, Renee Lindner, who uh, also manages the Kiba program. She actually spends Wednesdays in West Dallas. Um, and then also uh, through this crazy time, we, uh, we also did two rounds of um, small business grants uh, for businesses in West Dallas. Uh, we managed that program for you um, just, mo just very, very recently. Um, we did uh, 11 uh, micro enterprise grants of a little over $4,000. Nice work, thank you. Yeah, well, it's a great, great program. I mean, all around they offer, besides loans, I mean, um, classes to learn how to use QuickBooks and Excel and build a business plan and how to come up with marketing and free courses. It's, I mean, it's just a wealth of information that businesses can take advantage of. It's really an asset to have. Uh, commercial facade improvement program. This is a uh, working with, and I guess some of the projects that were where this has worked is definitely been on the east side of the city, the Pioneer District, Six Points, Farmers Market area, uh, our downtown. This is an example of a facade improvement in our downtown. It used to be um, a little small home improvement shop on one side, and it was never open. It was, it was yeah, <laughs> never, never open. Um, and then there's John's John's shoe yeah. shop on the other side, which had metal siding over the top of it. So, you know, unfortunately, John passed away and the business left. But uh, you know, so an opportunity here to uh, new owner came in, purchased the building, tore off the old metal siding, uncovered you know the little gem that's underneath, and then added some decorative lighting, you know, some new yeah. storefront windows. And it's, there's a mural, I don't have a picture, but there's a, a mural through our artscape program that was 
separate separate fungi that was added on the uh, on the west side of the building. So night rabbit. Is that the moon <clears throat> rabbit? Or yeah, rabbit? yeah. Night it's rabbit. Night rabbit. Night rabbit. That's a great picture. Mm -hmm. Great picture. Mm -hmm. That's quite a difference. Yeah. That's quite a difference. Yeah. And it's always been there. You know, it's always been there. And it's just been on cover it and dusted off a little. Yeah. Right? Is that what's going to be the brewery? Yeah. The little yes. Perspective. Perspective. Oh. So then, um, is the facade grant only eligible to those in? Downtown Six Points, Pioneer Neighborhood, and Burnham Point. Um, so it, it's focused on, you know, I guess the low to moderate income areas. Mm -hmm. It could be, it could be used elsewhere. Um, it, it sort of so does there within the area of and within moderate. those areas. Yeah. Street beautification. Our uh, DPW and Forestry Department do a, you know, fantastic job on. Uh, I've seen some of the medians throughout the city, 76th Street, um, Cleveland Avenue, just to name a few. Uh, so. I think that's just a huge improvement <clears throat> when you come in yeah. to the city and the different mm -hmm. points. Yes. Nice. They, uh, they're requesting 48.7, and that's what we're recommending. I love the Christmas trees, too. Yeah. Every year, like, oh, they're back. For so many years, I always thought that the trees were always there, but then, <laughs> then it's like, wait, they're. Yeah, where do you go? I always down. wonder where they oh, get all the work. trees all the time. I'm like, are you gonna run out? <laughs> I'm on beautification. <clears throat> yeah. Oh um, yeah. And that, and Mike, who's the head of forestry, said they get people calling up angry that they cut those trees down from the meetings. <laughs> <laughs> People don't realize they weren't there. They were put there and they were there to yeah. 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 the the yeah. 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 That's the hybrid Jack and Beanstalk Christmas tree. Yeah. Those are artificial yeah. pine trees too. They store them over at the yards. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought I saw something specifically on tree planting. Mm -hmm. Was that in here? Yes, it was for because we lost 120 plus trees in that storm. It was further there. down because I asked about yeah. it last time. We need to, we need to beat that up and a little bit. What did it, if we can? It was in one of these. If yeah, it was in here somewhere. It was specific. He, um, he said that typically it was three years to replace a tree. Yeah. The tree. They one. just removed a tree below, this yeah. year from my property and then little note they left down our door said it will be replaced so he, he's making mm -hmm. evidently better progress yeah. he's buying root based trees and he's putting them in stone and growing them from that oh. he's getting them much cheaper so it was just an experiment mm -hmm. but because of covid we have been having our purification meetings so I see him in the yard. I live close to the yard, and I can see his trees growing in stone. And it's a, a lot cheaper what he pays per tree. Well, uh, City Walk has their own nursery. City Walk has their own nursery. That's why Mike is trying to do that yeah. at cost. Yeah, because he gets yeah. a much yeah. cheaper. Yeah. Oh, cheaper. Oh, could we do that at Morgan? So mm -hmm. he's waiting. Was waiting to see. Yeah, room cuts. And, I mean, we could take decent. Well, he's been around. He's good at it. You know, I mean, that's, but I mean, yeah. so the yeah, the funds here will be used for the purchase. Uh, it looks like you know the three hundred well purchase and or plant three hundred eighty trees, one hundred thirty five shrubs, seven thousand flowers. Yeah. Uh, the exterior maintenance program is administered by our building inspections and neighborhood services uh, department and 175 562 is the request and that's the recommended level of funding so primarily on the east side of town <clears throat> within the low to moderate income census tract um, 1001 and 2 um, for the most eligible areas for this uh, project uh, the program is primarily focused that's that we rotated through districts programmatic districts the five districts so that every five years they were back in the same place. I don't know if they ever was. No, 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 I think no, it's no. primarily the east side. It yeah. could be. <clears throat> now we do have um, we do have exterior code enforcement. I think you know, in terms of you know, if there's something wrong, then we can certainly do that in other areas of the city. But I mean, that's for these these funds, I think these are focused on low and moderate income, you know, eligible areas. Well, this is <clears throat> this is money we're loaning people to be able to keep them if there's something. Uh, this isn't this isn't paying for inspectors. 
This no, is just give them. Th this pay. is get paid back. I think. But, I don't even think they have to pay it back. It's not cheap. Four percent, fifty percent, right? That's very low. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, well, if they're paying it back, then there should be last year's money back in the kitty again. Well, what what is this actually paying for? Well, it says code enforcement paid. slash inspections. Yeah, so this yeah. is the inspector. This is paid for the inspector. Inspectors, yes. Yeah, this is not money to citizens or homeowners. Hmm. Yeah. So all that money solely for inspectors? Yes. Yeah. But yeah, not good. citywide? No, I mean, this is going to be focused on the east, eastmost part of the city. Um, yeah, but when you... Dana, when you get a problem, you make a call, somebody gets on it, right? right. Yes, they're, but they're just not doing, in my district, they go block by block. And I can see when, it's, when they're mm -hmm. on a block, because like we get CC on all these, on all mm -hmm. these complaints. So yeah, I know, oh yeah, they're in the 1900 block, it's South 71st Street this week, you know, because mm -hmm. it's like. You're yeah. right. So it doesn't mean that I couldn't call on one of my well, clearly to be because the garage is falling yes. down yeah, because i live you know over by blight in oklahoma but they're gonna this is a target yes this initiative. is target. it doesn't mean exclude everybody else from i really thought for a same time when we talked about it because if you're in the same neighborhood every week hopefully it gets better eventually or every year it gets better i believe this one is that green map steve that it's most of it's most of West Dallas as a public service area. Yes. Right. Yeah. So it is most of, except for maybe parts of Orchard Hills or wherever. Yeah. So that might just not be quite correct. Ed was here. I could ask him. You know. uh -huh. But I know we're yeah, You know, so many times third beer. <laughs> people, people think in the neighborhood that because the uh, building is such and goes around the, uh, the alleys, you know, well, well, they feel that the city, I mean, it just goes there on purpose. Well, sure, there's a purpose, but many times the uh, complaints comes in from neighbors. Sure. I say 99% come mm -hmm. from neighbors, see? And, and to me, uh, the program is great, I'll tell you, because if you don't have building inspection follow through on those complaints and find those violators, lazy people not kind of the want doing anything outside, well, I think they deserve to be hurt, you know? Yeah, I don't I mean, want really. someone next door to me with rats. rats. More rats. <laughs> more rats. Or maybe you know? I want to put you my know, house up for sale and be like, who wants to live next? You know, <laughs> you have to. You know, the broken windows theory of what? Well, I mean, you have to. You have to make things look nice. Well, Otherwise. And the other thing, so Alderman had a couple of things. People think when they get written up, well, you're picking on me. What about the guy down the street? It's like, you know, I can look. Yeah, he got written up too. <laughs> And there's two kinds of people. The people who get the letter from the city and they go, oh, snap, I got to fix this. And they mow lawn or paint or fix the screen. And there's other ones that go, oh, whatever. And uh, we end up having to take them into court eventually sure. after multiple sure. letters and threats. And it could take two years. Sure. So, you know, the guy who cleaned up his house is now mad that he's not mad that he cleaned up his house. He's mad that the guy took it with felony. That's two years. What about the corner 84th and National? A big house. Oh, why is that? Why is that hot tub deck still there? <laughs> the, the deck on that house is just incredible. <laughs> that was done without a permit. Really? Yeah. Oh my god! That's and they have to repaint that thing every year. Oh, yeah. something wrong with the wood or something? It's always painted. Yeah. Whatever. Back to work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the house is really cool. It's I think it was kind of a. Kind of, uh, I went well, I went to elementary school with a girl who's like grandma up there and there's at the very, very, very top there used to be a speakeasy. You can still see like all the high heel marks in the floor. Mm -hmm. You go oh, into a closet God. and then there's a stairwell that takes you up here. Or you go into this closet and it's a stairwell that goes down and over and takes you over here. But that was anywhere in elementary school. For yeah, for yeah. an escape, like for when for gangsters per se. Yeah. 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 That is really, really cool. That is so cool. <laughs> Took it away from the cops. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, the other, I mean, that's sounds like wow. somebody that knows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you were older than what you meant? Yeah. Like that when she was in grade school? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was the same. Are you sure? 
Public facilities, uh, McKinley Park <laughs> improvements. Um, were, there were <laughs> the recommended or the requested funding was five is five hundred thousand. Um, recommended is two thirty seven. Again, just um, you know, cognizant of the budgets here. Um, and what this will what this will assist, and it's not going to pay for the you know the entire park, but it's it's a stepping stone towards uh, some progress. The, the, uh, we're working with a developer. Um, the park could be sold to the developer, and then we do want to keep a neighborhood park within this within this area. So as a many, not only to the apartment uh, future apartment building, but to the neighborhood, uh, keeping with the uh, tradition in the neighborhood park improvements. Um, this is just one concept. This isn't the yeah, that's final not, plan. That's maybe. that's not an approved plan, <clears throat> right? Oh. So, but that just shows somewhat of a concept with maybe a. So that's looking northeast. Here and here. 70th yeah. Street is on the right side. Yeah, this is 70th. Right. Yeah. So you said they're building an apartment building in the park. Yeah. So this shows. Plan? Yeah. This yeah. this is kind of a, a little bit dated plan here, but um, it would be. This is very very conceptual here, uh, but the idea would be to have um, some apartment buildings uh, within this park, and it gets to a scale that that works for the neighborhood. But then around that development to have, uh, whether it's a ball diamond or a, a community, like a shelter for barbecues or get out of the rain and the elements, maybe with a small kitchenette or something. Um, and then uh, maybe it could be a, a small dog park. There could be, uh, what else? I mean, there could be other amenities, playground, playground amenities within the park. So all that needs to be sort of worked out. This is just sort of a little bit of a Kickstarter uh, in working with developer to help, you know, start start to move towards, um, you know, some traction towards, uh, towards that part. The developer's been really challenged by the COVID situation because mm -hmm. the first piece of that development is the hotel, which was supposed to be done by now. Yeah. I think the plans have been approved and they're yeah. probably, they're going to be breaking down this fall. They do also, yeah. yeah. And that's over just north of yeah. Hotel. Oh, okay. It's, it's a it's very. I was trying to like check where this was. No hotel okay. here. The hotel will be on the east side of Seventy. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is a new program, neighborhood lighting program. Um, yeah, it's the it's one of the last of our public facilities programs. But um, the police department had uh, uh, recommended fifty thousand um, dollars, and we're recommending. Thirty-eight thousand eight hundred five to be put towards this, and these would be uh, solar fixtures similar to this that could be mounted upon existing infrastructure, like light poles or other poles within the city right away. These would not be on private property; these would be within corridors, you know, alleys, uh, public rights of way, streets, um, just for supplemental lighting. And perhaps there's some dark spots or gaps in between city lights where these can be introduced, um, and they would be. Uh, helping sort of an area better benefit, and um, again, just trying to take um, take to get the, right. eliminate some areas and reduce the you know the, like a proactive measure to reduce crime within um, certain areas of town. It's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. So these are the categories Excuse that we just me, went did through. Did we do the farmers market? I was cut off. Oh, up I apologize. Yeah. yeah, you're right. <laughs> I don't have the. I was back on the speaking. <laughs> <laughs> the, <laughs> <market. laughs> The farmer's market is not being, uh, we're not recommending to fund that. Yeah, uh, not that it's not important, but uh, in 21, we had a $100,000 allocation there. They still haven't used that money. Um, so there needs to be some some planning towards, you know, I think they have some ideas of what they want to do with that money, but the problem is just getting somebody to do the work. They've, they've asked Public Works to do the um, to do the work. Public Works is stretched six different ways from sideways. So it's, mm -hmm. it's hard to just say, here, go do it. They've got to find the time to do so. That's that's the issue with that. That makes sense. Yeah. No point to get money to sit right. on it. Yep. Right. Um, and then with that neighborhood lighting, um, we would we would likely not be uh, calling upon public works. I mean, not to say you couldn't, but we'd probably be hiring um, uh, a contractor in this case to, uh, to to do the you know the labor to install these on poles just to get it done. The money out there spent. That's the kind of the model of HUD. You know, they've, they've allocated money to us, spend it, don't let it sit around and you know, collect dust, get it out there, get it active, activated. So these are general categories that we just went through. Um, and the, and the, the funding levels on the right 
all adding up to the 1,572,775. Um, our next steps, uh, if, if so approved here by a committee, would be to um, uh, get this before county council. Yeah, I mean, uh, sometime in October, one of the meetings in October, the council meets twice. With that, um, that, so that concludes my I'm presentation. Sorry, yeah. Ask another question. I didn't want to interrupt when you were on the administration stuff before you got through all the mm -hmm. allocations. So the administration costs. Um, I realize that there's, you know, percentages and stuff, and maybe that's why it came down once you did all the other um, allocations, but I see there's a $16,208 difference. Was that, the, is that a specific reason? Like, did you guys pull back staff, or is that based on that allocation once you allocated everything else, you can only do a certain percentage? Or, or are you looking at the... Uh... The I think it's missing. The I think it's group. missing another administrative cost, maybe. Yeah, community yes. development administrative cost number one. Yeah. I was just curious. Uh, I meant to ask before. I mean, lots of yeah. programs didn't get what they asked for, but from an administrative standpoint, I was just curious. Is it the same people doing all the same stuff to run the program, or just I was curious. Um, Quite a difference. Yeah. Of 16,000 you're talking yeah. about? Muriel, did you? Yeah, I'm trying to open up my computer to see where I pulled those numbers from. I think program income was included in the number, and that's what added it up to 314, maybe. Well, oh, that's asking, down. Yeah, that's so down with fair housing. Oh, yeah. So yeah. You go down to the bottom line of public administration. Right, but the sixteen came from specifically the administrative cost. Right. Yeah. And even the total is still plus the sixteen total eight. Or did you not use it all from last year, so you really could get me them? I was just curious because. I don't have that. Uh, don't have that answer offered for my time yet, unfortunately. Get back Wait, to I took the I took the numbers from that Excel that PDF document. Sure. So they they should match to that table. Okay. Well, I think more so the question was if the request was for three twenty five, why did we only approve three hundred eight seven ninety two? Where did we feel the sixteen thousand two hundred eight was not needed? Correct. Mm -hmm. Or did it? Or did, did, did we, the formula yeah. get screwed up with percentages because or of the did, other yeah. allocations? Did we not need it? Or is it not that's what I was wondering. Calculated. Well, there are increases in the budget. Maybe that had an effect on it. And you got all this extra money, and you have a system already set up, and you need to need that much money. That was what I was wondering. And actually, it looks like if I look back in the old one, it is a little increase. It is an increase. So it was a little increase over last year. Mm -hmm. Just didn't put in something, realize, oh, didn't need all that. And mm -hmm. why would you? Maybe I over above last year, we did. Yeah, there was there was some little hiccup early on where they, the actual entitlement they were going to give us was, um, was one number. And it was less. Then it went up. I don't know if this is the. It's, it's not a big deal. I was just curious. It looks like it was a little increase if I look back in my in from last year budget, and it probably was that you initially threw in a number that you thought it was going to cost, and then, you know, right. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna find out. Or maybe you moved it over to the vats. No, I'm just saying. Because <laughs> no, I understand no, there's different pots. I get it. I yeah. just. <laughs> You, you don't even know. Uh, there was some concern about the uh, revenue that we were mm -hmm. supposed to fund. They were supposed to get with funding less. I think maybe it could be part of the reason. You know, you know, the questions of the number changing. You know, there was some, perhaps some adjustment. That's what Patrick, I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think Patrick said we had to stay at 20%. So maybe that's why he adjusted it down. 
but I was yeah, wondering same. if that's what yeah. it was. Would make sense. Right. I think I think he had to make the numbers balance. Yes. Well, because the staff costs are the staff costs, mm -hmm. right? Unless right. you reduce someone's hours, that's kind of why I was saying. That's probably what it is. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I'm a firm believer in infrastructure because if you want all these programs to work, somebody better be paying attention and holding yeah. things accountable. And that's the only reason I asked. <laughs> that's what we need for. No? Well. Yeah. Usually, everyone talks about it's direct service, it's direct, direct. You don't forget all that administrative stuff. You know? Yes. So, I don't know if there's any other questions, but uh, otherwise, Steve, I would. Jeremy, I turn it back over to you. He's connecting back to his audio. Okay. All right. What are you going to say? Did you cough or what? <laughs> Maybe he had to log back in. Okay. Steve, Steve, are you there? Uh, See. Yeah, I my uh, AT and T dropped me. I so I had to switch over to my uh, hotspot. Oh, okay. Thanks. It's so very reliable. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, do you need a? Uh, do we need a motion to approve the um, thing, or do you have any public comments? I guess um, I don't have. I mean, we did have um, public comment. Um, was indicated at the last meeting that there was a um, uh, person that wanted some additional funds for um, parks, specifically Liberty. Um, that is being funded at a ten thousand dollar level. It's not, you know, it's for the waiting pool. Um, certainly, we'd love to put in more, but we also have to balance that uh, within the other program requests. And uh, we focused on McKinley Park, given the the fact that that's um, ending a, a redevelopment and um, the need for you know some park uh, improvements, a new park at that end at McKinley. So, um, given that public comment has been received, but um, nothing additional at this, at this time. Okay. So then, do we need to uh, do we need to approve this to go to council next month? I would I would suggest yeah. It just basically just it could all sort of give us your how you feel about the recommended level of funding. Um, I know there was a question about the, you know the difference in that public administration that's noted, and uh, we certainly find that out. Um, I apologize, I don't have the great it's answer. Not it's not a to prove But that. yeah, at, at this point, yes, Steve, please. Okay, so then, I, then I'd uh, entertain a motion to approve the uh, report. I mean, I to recommend that the uh, bond grant program to the common council. Correct. Yeah. Second. Is there any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, so the motion carries. Okay. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Right. All in favor of adjournments? Aye. 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 That's, there's never any opposition to that. So. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks a lot for everybody's work. I mean, I'm going to see that. <laughs>